All right, so we just wrapped up a very successful qualifiers here at World Championships. The fortunate part of being World Championships being hosted by Park City is that we have access to the center of excellence. Uh, that's for US ski and snowboard, the entirety of the program, Nordic, Alpine, free skiing, snowboarding, everybody is in here under one roof training in the same zone, which means we have access to all the best machines in the world. We have made our way to the kitchen area. This is where all the nutrition for the team happens. This is Mr. Alan Tron, and he's gonna tell you all about what goes on here yeah. at US Free Skiing and Snowboarding. Yeah. Well, just as important as all the, well, all the stuff that the skiers have to do out on the training floor, and of course on the hill. They have to fuel themselves to be able to do all that stuff. So, this is where they put the good stuff in their bodies and get that energy and build that muscle, keep that muscle, and be strong, yeah. And this is the guy who cooks it for us. Yeah. I can do stuff in the kitchen, but we're also in the lab over there looking at like how to get your body as strong as possible too. So okay. both sides, science and the art. All right, so the goal here today is building strength without breaking my muscles down. So let me ask you a nutrition question. This is something that I have a personal, uh, obviously, bias towards, but what do you think about athletes who eat game meat almost exclusively for their protein intake? Well, game meat is a great source of protein just by itself. Um, it's fast twitch muscles because these game animals have to be like out in the wild being really strong. So these are typically really healthy animals too. So mm -hmm. you're eating meat from them, good fuel equals good results. So yeah, I'm all for that kind of you thing. You heard it from the top guys, yeah. scientifically proven. Yeah. Best thing you can eat. Yeah. The game man. is changed. Get it? Game. <laughs> yeah. I, see you. I yeah. see you. This is one of my favorite machines here. Kind of your typical looking leg press machine but uh, it's independent, so I can lift up one leg or the other at a time. And it's also got these nifty backstops at the bottom, so if you think about it, when I take off on skis, I never start here, suck it up really heavy, and then explode. It's all kind of starting in the hole like this, and then I'm working on my ability to be really explosive. So I like to do this, I like to use this machine because I can kind of do it plyometric style. And it's training those all on muscles. Not just how much you can lift, but how quickly can you lift a lot. Although I don't, do a, I don't do a ton of reps, uh, I almost never go to failure. If you're going to failure, that's how you get really, really sore, and that's the last thing I want to do now. I'm trying to keep things sharp, keep my nerves like, but not get super tired. Right, this was one that I do partly because it's effective, but mostly because it's super challenging and fun. Um, it's sort of a balance, independent suspension thing, upper body and core workout. But um, what makes it interesting is it's not really about how many reps you do, it's about just staying balanced. Like you just do so much of this little like wiggly movement and those muscles, those like stability muscles, when you have a crash, um, or you land a little heavy, those are the ones that protect you from getting injured. So uh, when you hit hard, uh, if you have not just strong primary muscles, but also strong secondary muscles, it's huge. So that's why uh, I do a lot of this kind of stuff. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Do you want to see Tennessee try this? <laughs> yeah? Okay. He's up! He's up, folks! Up! Oh, he's got! Well, you know. 
<laughs> Justin would like me to inform you that the first time you try these goofy things that I do, they're the hardest, and then the second time they're not that bad. So he's pretty confident he's gonna get it right here, right now. Uh, how do you recover from this right here, though? You just put all your pressure on that arm. There you go. He's in. He's back. He's up, folks. He's up. <laughs> he's out of focus, but he's up. All right, let's watch this technique. Dang, dude. This is another classic one for me, uh, working on that all-on explosive muscle fiber that I'm trying to keep strong. Uh, this is contest mid-contest weight, so I do this a little heavier normally, but um, it's dumbbell dead. You'll notice if you watch me train enough, I hardly ever put a bar on my back. I hardly ever do sort of your traditional style of workouts because the reality is for me, nothing I do on skis is traditional. I'm never in this position. I don't like putting that much weight on my back, all that kind of thing. So this one is a little bit more uh, position that I would be in on skis. Obviously I'm lifting pretty heavy and I'm working on that ability to get from zero to 60 as fast as I possibly can. So I'm trying to do a series. These, this is a series of one rep maxes. I'm not doing, um, I'm not doing a bunch of reps. I'm actually doing all on and then I'll take a break at the bottom, shake my shoulders out and then do another one. So a lot of times you'll see guys go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Most of the things that I do on skis have to do with that one moment, that all on one rep max. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I can probably get a feel for why I go when I'm visualizing things because I'm just used to it from going. Oh. Guys, let me introduce you to Kara. Kara is the one who uh, basically taped me together <laughs> for the years uh, between Sochi and Pyeongchang when I was on the struggle bus, struggle train, uh, struggle locomotive. Kara was the one taping me back together and uh, we got through it and we. Good year we ended up with an Olympic gold medal. We did. We <laughs> absolutely did. So. I think that's how that works, right? Kara, where are we? Tell, tell, uh, tell we you two where we're at. We are at uh, US Dance Snowboard Center of Excellence. This is where all the behind the scenes magic happens. But what specific part of the center? Oh, oh. We are in the rehab clinic. So, not always the happiest of places. Although we try to make it happy. Okay. Yeah. Every once in a while um, you'll come in for a shin rub or something. But uh, most of the time if you're in this room, Kind of a bad some thing. Physio, yeah, you're, some you're, athletic you're recovering training. from some kind of trauma, which is pretty plentiful in our sport. So, but then we get you back out there, and That's right. it's super rewarding. So, they yeah. certainly this facility has the ability to get athletes back out there better than any place I've ever seen. Like, you know, taking I mean, injuries are going to happen. They're they're inevitable, but taking that and saying, okay, it happens, it's over, 
Now, how quickly can we get you back to your sport at a strength level that you're comfortable with? You know, or at, at, a, at a healing level you're comfortable with. It's amazing. They really do so amazing. And a psychological level too, right? True. Like part <laughs> yeah, how therapist, healed is your part. brain? <laughs> It's huge, right? It's huge. Getting the mentality back in the game. To give Justin a little credit here, guys, uh, you guys don't know this, but Justin is, what, eight months, nine months out? Eight months. Eight months out of an ACL reconstructive surgery. So this is perfect for him. That's his, that's his slightly weaker leg he's working on. And I was just explaining to him um, that even though he feels like his leg is as, is as strong as his right, or even stronger should be, because um, he's been working on it so hard, He's still struggling to convince his own mind that it is that way. So these are, this is what it's perfect, this is what that drill, this drill is perfect for, is like just convincing your mind, actually I'm gonna be okay. Because your mind naturally pr protects those injuries. It says, oh, that's, a, that's uncomfortable, compromised. And then you'll just, your muscles will give out. Because that's your brain telling your body to let loose. But Justin is convincing his own left leg that he can do this. You would be amazed how effective this is. So I'm just standing on a slack line, and all I'm trying to do is build these connector muscles, these stability muscles, uh, build them in some sense, and in, in other senses, turn the nerves on. Because if you don't ever do things like this that are unstable, then your mind doesn't know how to react in unstable circumstances. But the reality for me is when I'm skiing in the half pipe, my landings are rarely ever stable. I'm either like on edge or I'm, it's icy or maybe it's bumpy or whatever. And so training these muscles is super important. So I'm gonna do this one, this first one, the way I would want you guys to do it. You can do it on the little guy over here. Find a slack line. Find a slack line anywhere. You can set, you can buy your own, you can buy one of these little rigs, you can, you can find one at your gym. But just start by Getting up, getting stable, and then getting your knee down into what I would call a compromised position. So 90 to 110 degrees of flexion in your knee, and then just get real comfortable there, just stay. And then the more comfortable you get, the more you can challenge yourself, you can put your hands behind your back so you don't have the help of your hands. Or the ultimate one for me is try to do it with my eyes closed. So I'll get up here, get, get flexed, it's stable, and then I'll do it with my eyes closed for as long as I can. Then you're just not, you're not just training your eyes and your nerves response to what your eyes are seeing. You're training your nerves response to how your body feels, what's going on in the inner, inner part of your ear, what your brain is sensing. It's, trust me, it's something, it'll, it'll blow your mind how much more stable you'll feel the next time you go out and ski. Even I can't do it for very long, but it's good. We are in the ski teching, the ski and snowboard teching room at the center of excellence. We're here getting excellent. Uh, I want to tr introduce you to Parker. Parker uh, is the pipe snowboard tech, but he is also the guy who ground my skis for me. And let me tell you, these skis I've skied on the last couple days are the best pair of skis I've ever ridden. So clearly he had something to do with it. Awesome. And uh, yeah, he's, with, he's the guy who makes us go fast. I'm honored to be honest. I mean, he, Dave Wise right here, also did uh, your Olympic skis as well. That's right. Um, and ever since then, so all these, these moments that have been coming out, and uh, they're pretty awesome. I like working with them, as we were saying. So, you know, nice mean camber, I like that. Good base yeah, material. Definitely some camber in these bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's champion me who just looks at me while I'm working out and asks me, you dogging it? You dogging it, bro? <laughs> so, the cool thing about this facility is that it's the it's the the headquarters for the entire U.S. Ski and Snowboard team. So, um, obviously, one of the main things we shoot for as the U.S. Ski and Snowboard team is excellence uh, at the Olympic Games. So, everybody who has one of these banners around the room is a medalist from the Olympics, and it's cool because you can start all the way over on that side where they go. I mean, the photos are all faded and, and awful, and you can tell they're from way back in the day. Some of the, some of the moments I remember watching as a kid, like Johnny Mosley landing, Shannon Barkey landing her runs. So that's it for, uh, thanks for taking a tour of Center of Excellence with me today, and tagging along for my workout. We're gonna go finish up, do some abs, but you guys have seen enough. Catch you guys later, contest time. <laughs>